I have a really short, simple earthquake dream, but then I have another short dream that had two similarities uh, related to the dream. You want that one instead? Uh, start with the short dream, the okay. first one we're talking about. Um, this was April 17th of two, uh, 2020. I had dreamed that we had a pretty strong earthquake here in Kansas City. It lasted at least a minute to a minute and a half and had us holding on to our kitchen counter because it was so strong. And as it was happening, there was a strange loud ringing in the air. In the dream, I thought it sounded like all the church bells in the city were being shaken at once. I also thought that whoever is in the epicenter of this quake, and I thought of California, even though that's so far away, is getting hit hard for us to feel it so strongly here. After the earthquake was over, I looked outside and some of the treetops were still swaying really hard, but then my alarm woke me up. <laughs> Where are you at, Christina? We're in Kansas City. Kansas City, okay. Yeah. Cool. Cool America. America, you guys just had the send there. Yeah, we did. Cool. <laughs> All right. What do you got, Neil? Uh, there's going to be a shaking. There is a shaking coming. And I think you were given this kind of a revelation of it back in 2020. Um, said that the earthquake lasted about a minute to a minute and a half. And there was a strange ringing, like all the church bells were being. You didn't say that the church bells were ringing. You said that they were being shaken, um, which is kind of significant yeah. because... Yeah. I think this this earthquake is coming for the church mm. and there's going to be those who those churches whose bells have rung in the past that are going to be shaken and they won't ring the way they did before that god's god's going to be doing something with them to shake them to their core you know mm. and those are the churches that aren't really doing what they're supposed to do what was the part about you that they felt it all the way in california I, I was thinking that whoever is the epicenter of the earthquake, because it wasn't in Kansas City, I felt that it was California in the dream, even though it's so far away from Kansas City. Yeah, I think I think the revival in this nation is going to come. It's going to start in California, and it's going to the shockwave that it's going to send across the country will be felt, at least as far as Kansas City, probably all the way to Maine. Um, but you felt it because that's where you're you're living. So <clears throat> I think it really keep your eyes on California because I think there's going to be some the shaking's going to start there and there's some people that are hopefully going to be in a high position in government there soon that will start the shaking mm -hmm. where they are. Um, the treetops are swaying even after all the um, the shaking had stopped. You know, trees are often a representative of leadership, so there are some leaders that are in government positions that are going to be swaying and not in a good way, probably. They won't be toppled mm -hmm. over, but they're going to be swaying and wondering which way is the wind blowing? Which way am I supposed to stop? You know, do I sway back to my old way of thinking or do I sway under God's covering and protection? Um, but the leaders are going to be shaken too. Yeah, they're swaying really hard, like literally like this. Yeah. Like a tornado type swaying, not earthquake. So it's really strong. Even after it was all. Yeah, because I went down. out the back door and looked over the trees and they were swaying really hard. Yeah, like unnaturally far. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they are going to be swayed, hopefully swayed in a good way, you know, yeah. towards righteousness. But the, they have a choice. They will either sway and, and remain upright or they'll sway and break. Mm -hmm. You know, if they, if they sway and break, that's the end for them. You know, it's kind of the concept of turn or burn. I think that's that's the choice that we're going to be given. Okay. Yeah, I think it's interesting that you felt it was in California, but you felt it in Kansas City. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's the idea, and, and somebody had posted about um, Seymour um, in the Azusa uh, revival, mm -hmm. the idea that he was baptized in the Holy Spirit in Kansas City. So the idea of something happening in Kansas City, which could even be the send, you know, it could be the House of Prayer movement. You know, what, what Mike Bickle has, has, has built there. I uh, love Mike. love the work that he's done. Um, but <clears throat> uh, literally shaking the nation. 
Um, when I think of prayer movements in America, I, I always think of Kansas City. I think of IHOP um, yeah. because other than maybe the Moravians, there probably hasn't been, at least in my knowledge, a more pronounced prayer movement, mm -hmm. certainly in our lifetime, as what Mike started at IHOP and what has spread, you know, literally all around the world. Um, but it mm -hmm. still continues to, you know, 24-7 prayer to continue to saturate the country and to pray for an ending of abortion and ascending a revival and the things that Mike and Lou and many others have, you know, championed for years, the Justice House of Prayer in D.C., um, Matt Lockett, Will Ford, you know, all these guys that have been praying, contending for our nation for literally decades. Um, but a lot of that was birthed out of what was happening in Kansas City. So the idea that places in particular, um, there's been a lot of words about earthquakes in California. Um, the thing that we have to discern is, are they spiritual quakes? Are they real quakes? Are they, I think a lot of people take the dreams at face value and think that, you know, people talk about, you know, states falling off the map and into the yeah. ocean. And I don't believe that that's the destiny of the state of California. Um, but I do believe that there are definitely some things that need to shake out there. Um, and, and quite a bit. And I think the prayers of the saints um, in particular, even in places like the Midwest um, and other places um, are certainly going to cause the quake that will be felt around the world because it'll radically shift places like Hollywood, places like Silicon Valley, San Francisco, um, things, things like that. So yeah, I believe that uh, there's possibly something that was initiated in the spirit in Kansas City um, that will be felt on the West Coast and will reverberate throughout the country. Okay. It's pretty so, neat. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for sharing, Christina. You're welcome. All right. Take I care. can save this other one for next time. So. Well, we got a little time if you if it's short. Hit us. Go ahead. Uh, okay. Uh, this was January 16th of this year. Um, I was up on a large hill watching an elk walking along in the grass by a narrow but winding river. Suddenly I was on level ground and the elk was chasing me. I was running, but it was getting closer. And right before it got to me, I stopped running, turned around and roared in the face of the elk. Mm. It was an animalistic roar. And I felt like I had to roar like a mountain lion or other large feline predator to scare it off. <laughs> the elk stopped in its tracks turned and ran away. As it ran, one and then the other antlers fell off its head. Wow. Now this one had two similarities that I found out after this dream. Yeah, can you tell? Um, that very morning, well, the afternoon, I went online and one of the titles on, of a news article, it said that a hiker roars at a mountain lion chasing him to scare it off. Mm-hmm. And then a few days later, I learned there's some lady on YouTube. I don't know who she is. My mother follows her. Um, she had a dream. She called it a demonic dream. But she was being chased by an alligator, which turned into a shaman. And he had a full headdress, face markings, and talismans. They were running and running. And all of a sudden, she stopped, turned around, and roared like a lion into his face. And he stopped, stunned turned around, ran, and his talismans were falling off of him. Mm. And that happened two to three days prior to my dream when she had her dream. That's interesting. So wow. I just found that a uh, coincidence. <laughs> <clears throat> Those are one and the same and your generational connection is, it, it's being told to both generations. You said it was your mother, right? Uh, no, she, there's somebody she falls on YouTube. I'm not exactly her, sure who she is, this lady. Interesting. But her dream was like two to three days prior to mine, which I just found really interesting. This is, to me, this, but is, she a, is, a little older. this, this is a spiritual warfare dream. You know, an elk is not a predator per se, but it's it's a yeah. very large animal. Mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's by a, a narrow winding river. So it's not the raging river of the Holy Spirit that you, you see, you get the vision of in Revelation, you know, out of our innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. This is a trickle. Um, it, it's it's um, a place that, it's just a, a marker in the, in the wilderness almost. Um, mm -hmm. But he's chasing you. And, you know, just because things chase you in your dreams doesn't mean it dreams come from God. Dream is warning you yeah. that something is pursuing you. And he's giving you the strategy to stop that thing from chasing you. And this other lady who was on YouTube, um, mm -hmm. 
It says, rebuke the devil and he will flee from you. And you did that. You turned, you roared at him, rebuked the the elk, scared the bejesus out of him. <laughs> and I wanted to turn around and drop his antlers. It's like dropping his drawers, you know? It's like everything fell his off. His weapons, of yeah. You no, know, his, his weapons fell off. He was, he was, yeah. he was disarmed by your roar. So in the way this dream looks like it went is, you know, learn about spiritual warfare if you don't know it already, which sounds like you already do, but, you know, go to Ephesians 6, you know, and put on the full complement of the gospel armor and stand firm. And that's what you did when you turned around, when you finally stopped running and you stood your ground, you stood firm and rebuked it. That's mm-hmm. when it turned and fled. You know, the gates of hell aren't going to prevail against God's church and Satan can't stand in the presence of the Lord, and especially his word. A single word from him will make him flee. And so that's your strategy. It, you know, you don't have to go into a long diatribe of, you know, quoting scripture forever and ever. It's a word. Just do it. It's like stopping a dog if it's running at you. You scream at it. It's like, yeah. It's like, huh? You know, they will stop. Same with the devil. It's the exact same thing. You can't stand. You can't stand people who are filled with the Holy Spirit and have the power of God. So rock on. Thank you. <laughs>